No, Tom, we're not related. We're not even like second cousins. I swear, it's fine. Anyway, you'll never guess what happened. Last week, Greg got caught smoking. So mom and dad took away his groovy pad in the attic and gave it to me. Yeah, this is my lucky day. It's my lucky week, actually. I can't wait for a date Saturday night. And then for the big game on Sunday. <sighs> yeah, I gotta go now, it's almost showtime. Okay, bye-bye. No, you hang up first. All right, we'll hang up, we'll hang up together. <sighs> this is my lucky day. And you know what? Tom was right. Keep it squishy and it's easier to catch. Welcome everybody to Living Figuratively with your host, Judy Takis. This is the show, Living Figuratively is the show that asks the question, why not fill your home with the fascinating faces and figures of people that you don't even know? Why not fill your home with figurative art? Today is part two in our Getting High series. Last week we got high in the living room. Today we're going to get high in the family room. And right now we're high above the family room and I want to show you real quick what the painting is that's hanging right up here. So let's kick it off with this beautiful drawing by Shirley Alley Campbell. And you probably remember Shirley Campbell. I've been showing you my gicle paint of my painting of her past couple past a couple of more a couple episodes a while ago. Um, Shirley Campbell is an iconic figurative artist from the Cleveland area, and she painted on the fabulous fringes of the figurative art world. She is kind of like Cleveland's own version of Alice Neal and Lucian Freud put together. Um, she painted people from all walks of life. She painted a lot of transvestites and burlesque dancers and people from motorcycle people with a lot of tattoos um, and also people from the gay community well before any, any of these people were sort of out there in the public, but she was, you know, this was in the 60s and the 70s. Um, so she was an amazing painter. She worked in the, with the process of the old masters where she did not use photography. She did drawings from life and then did her paintings from those drawings. So this right here is a drawing. It's a preliminary drawing for my favorite painting of her. This one is called The Anniversary, a drawing she did from life. And I'm gonna show you where the actual painting is, which just so happens to be part of my collection as well. I'm thrilled that I have both pieces in my collection and I think it's kind of cool to have them across the you know wall from each other like that. Um, this painting is from life and I love the strength and the solidity of it. I love how it's the squish of it and the, the, the gravitas and the, the, you know, the weight of the two figures. She told me it's called the anniversary because she was painting a couple who actually were a couple and it turned out that the day they were posing was their anniversary. So she asked them to kiss and maybe hold a kiss for a while. And that was the moment that she that she painted them. Um, it's a gorgeous piece. It does remind me of Lucian Freud, especially because she's got that beat up old chair that they're both sitting on, and the you know just the humanity and the flesh of it. It's really, really just a beautiful, beautiful piece, which I'm thrilled to have. It's a beautiful pairing on a wall full of pairings. Right next to it, we have um, my painting. It's called Guarded Idealist, which that is also from my Seven Deadly Sins series. And um, my Seven Deadly Sins series, the, uh, the, the premise behind it is that the Seven Deadly Sins are not so deadly and they're not so sinful. Uh, this one is a play on the two sins of greed and jealousy. But instead of you know it being an evil thing, she is actually guarding her idealism with you know, greedily guarding her idealism and jealously guarding her idealism. So it's, you know, it was made a nice pairing. And this one is an older painting of mine. So I 
when I had the Bonfoy uh, installers here a couple weeks ago, I had them hang that one high because she's not going anywhere now at this point because because she's hanging high. But she is one of my favorite paintings and she's won some awards too. So, you know, I love, I love it. Um, let's scan around the family room over here to this other, to the other side, which is my curated clutter area. Um, basically, we have this gigantic entertainment center. When we built the house, I wanted to, I wanted to put the entertainment center stuff, the TV and the stereo and everything like that, inside nice cabinetry. My husband likes to have it out, you know, looking all space 1999 and futuristic. I like to have it behind cabinets and because sometimes I let him win and sometimes he lets me win. This one was one where I got to win, where we put the all that wonderful stereo equipment and TV stuff behind the cabinets um, and built this gigantic entertainment center. Since you can look over the balcony and see the top of the entertainment center, we had the carpenters put um, boards on the top so that to finish it will be like a floor. And those floors are very supportive. I know that because when the painters were painting, they were standing on them. And I figured, well, if they can stand on them, I could too. Uh, so after they got done painting, I hung a pa couple paint of my paintings up there. And those ones are staying there, but they're easy enough to get down because really I just need to get on a ladder and then climb up on the, um, the, the top of the entertainment center. Which, and also if I had to get one of those paintings, you know, like if it went to a show or sold, even better, um, it would give me an opportunity to dust the whole thing because it really hasn't been dusted for 12 years. So you will have to excuse the dust a little bit. Hopefully you can't see it too much on uh, Facebook Live. Um, so curated clutter up here. One of the things that I did is I went with color themes. Uh, the whole room has this terracotta slash raspberry color to it. And then the secondary color is kind of a dusty blue. You'll see more of that downstairs. So I went with those color themes with my curated clutter. And one of the things that put these sort of big chunks of color were the Barbie cases. And why do I have all these Barbie cases? It's not because I'm a Barbie person or a doll person. I'm not really, I'm not a doll person whatsoever, but at one point in my life, I went to a garage sale that surprisingly had in the garage, it was like Barbie case of Palooza. They had, they must have had a hundred Barbie cases. And so what I did was I picked some of the cooler ones that were in the color families that I'm looking for, like the dusty blue, that orangey terracotta, and then I don't know if you can see those from here, but there's some black ones, which are the older ones from 1962, 1964, that have the silk screened art on them. And so it's got a very simple color pattern and it's got this really nice mid-century modern vibe to it. Um, so one of my concepts with the curated clutter is if you have one thing, it just looks like you or heading down to storage and you were going to just take it down, you know, it's not, it's not intentional. If you have nine of them, it's intentional and it's a design element that you design with. So I actually have nine Barbie cases. I don't need more. I don't need less. Um, but I have nine Barbie cases in different places on there and they make sort of these nice little color, color resting places. Um, so that's one of the things I did. Now, when you're doing a curated clutter area like this, that's this high, you have to put things up higher because when you're down on the ground and you look up at it, you can't see the probably the bottom two feet of stuff. You can only see it from up here. But down there, and you've got the perspective is not working in your favor, so you can't see the stuff that's piled up. So you have to raise things up. So it's nice to put chairs up there, which is what I did. I took some old vintage um, folding chairs from the 1960s. There's a piano stool that looks like it could be Victorian. I'm not sure when it was made. And I've got some um, uh, candle holders, like big candle holders that were made out of wires because when we were building the house, the wire stuff was kind of popular. 
um, which is also why I have this chandelier that's a wire chandelier in the middle, which I loved so much, I got two of them, and there's one also in my studio because it was just the chandelier, like it's a chandelier that really spoke to me. So that wire stuff was very popular back then, and I still love it. Um, and, you know, maybe someday I will get some candles to go on top of those uh, candle holders. They look like they really actually could need some. But then I need to get on the ladder and get up there. But anyway, so that's my curated clutter up there with repetition and repetition of color. I've got some repeated hats and a, the uh, lampshade that looks like a hat that my grandmother actually made, which was kind of cool. It was We had it in my house growing up the whole time. Um... So now, let's go on downstairs, and I will show you. I'll take you down the hallway. It might be a little bit dark here, because this is not the place we're emphasizing. And you've seen this already, the staircase with the, uh, the uh, works of art that I have on the staircase. You've seen the Max Ginsburg foyer. You've seen the living room. You saw that last week. Brand new one, which we'll focus on at another time, but we've got this gorgeous beauty by Karen Offit. And now, down here, welcome to the family room. Okay, so now we get a close look at the entertainment center, and you can see how it's nice to have things at different heights because you can't see everything that's on there, and the you know just the perspective works against you. The other thing that I did down here, and this was a, you know, a wonderful thing that I did for my husband because we've got all these stereo and speaker and woofer and you know speaker parts and everything in there. It's behind the doors. And these doors are not wood doors because you couldn't hear them through the wood doors. They are fabric doors. And um, I purposely picked a fabric that you could see through a little bit. That's what the stereo guys told me, is that if you can see through the fabric a little bit, then the sound can come through the fabric a little bit. Um, so I purposely picked the fabric in this dusty blue. It's a little bit sheeny, it's a little bit shiny. And they put them on the, um, the cabinet doors that have speakers behind them. So that's something, that's something you can do. Uh, so this is the entertainment center from down below. Now, I would like to introduce you to my couch. Okay, so when we were doing our family room, okay, this couch right here is about 15 years old. We had this at our old house to replace our old, old, old couch, which was basically totally, totally trashed over years of use. And we got it in 1992 when we first moved to North Carolina and you know we wanted a new couch and over the years it got trashed and trashed and trashed with you know living in a living room with kids it had milk and spit up and soup and rabbit poop and um, all kinds of things on it the cushions got taken off hundreds of times to make forks and stuff like that they were ridden on like horses they the couch was trashed so when we replaced that couch we made some preemptive decisions. One of them was that the cushions would not be removable, which made everybody very sad because then they couldn't build forts. But we had an ace, ace up the sleeve. I had these cushions made. We had six of these made with, and I sewed different jeans onto them because my kids had all these old jeans and I thought that was cool. And I purposely bleached the denim. I, I bought you know lots and lots of denim bleached it in the washing machine with bleach um, to make these cushions so that they could make forts with them. And we purposely got blankets to match the living room so that when the forts were made, they would match the living room. You know, so that if you can't beat them, if you can't beat them, join them. So that's what we did. We also had these little round round little end tables here, which when you take off the tray, these little round parts can also make fork parts. We had a whole bunch of them, and you can put your feet on them, put your drinks on them, and um, so we lived with this couch for 15, you know, 10, 10 years, and until this couch kind of got trashed too, but it was exactly the right shape. It was the right color, theoretically, 
it was exactly what we needed and we didn't want to replace it. So we did this miraculous thing that I didn't know existed, but I highly, highly recommend it. We found this company called The Leather Solution in Barberton, Ohio, and I'm sure that there's ones, you know, wherever you are, that does leather painting. They painted this couch. They painted this couch back to its original color. They matched the colors on the back because the back wasn't trash. It was just the parts that we sat on. They painted the couch and it looked amazingly brand, brand new. It was um, probably the smartest decorating decision that I've ever done because we didn't have to get a new couch. There was no such couch like this available. This was a once in a lifetime thing. So I think when this gets trashed again, we will paint it again. Hopefully it'll be a while before it gets trashed again. And then one of the things that we also did in the same breath was to get a nice big coffee table that we could put our feet on. It's actually an ottoman. Um, we found a fabric because there were limited fabric choices. We found one that we could sort of swing the living room towards. So it's got the dusty, it's got the dusty blues. It's got the reds in it. And um, if you want to zoom in over here and show, um, it's got the, the different colors and everything. And we actually even did some cushions to uh, some uh, pillows, like to throw pillows to go on the couch to sort of tie, tie everything back together. Now, the other thing, okay, so now we're back to the wall. Um, this is the bottom half of the wall. The, I have these two paintings that I did probably also like 10 years ago um, of the different men in my, in my family. And while these were hung here, I could never get them lined up right. It was really hard to get them lined up right because I was never on the ladder right, their couch was in the way. So what I actually ended up doing was for a long time hanging them at different, different heights intentionally but they really kind of belonged at the same level. So when I knew that I had booked the Bonfoy Gallery installers to come, one of the things I did was I took them down, got them framed, framed them myself, um, because they had never had frames on them. Uh, and I also repainted little Marky's head because it was never quite right. And now I think it is quite right. And that was, a, that was its own level of challenge because what I had to do was to get into my head and paint it as a good version of how I painted back then. I didn't want to end up repainting the whole thing the way that I would paint it now because if I were doing it now, I would paint it probably differently. But I had to sort of get into, into my 2012 head, paint a good version of that, and then get out of Dodge. And fortunately, I did do that, got them framed, got them hung when the Bonfoy Gallery installers came, and um, I think they, they look excellent now, and that's, that's where they're gonna stay. All right, so now, the last thing that we have, I wanna show you, Facebook reminded me just this past, maybe week and a half, that this is the 10 year anniversary of my first solo show which was called His, Hers, and the Truth at the Notre Dame College of Ohio. It was actually a book signing with my mom. Um, my mom had just published The Condo, which is a book of hers, and my painting is on the cover. And she had a book signing and I had an art show. So that painting was in the show, along with the two paintings that are on the postcard. And the two paintings that are on the postcard, basically the, the concept was His, Hers, and the Truth is that in every conflict, there's three sides, his, hers, and the truth. And these two paintings, I have hanging on high, way up high on this, the far wall. And that was its own special trick to hang those. I hung those myself back in the day when we first moved here. And I actually had to get up on a ladder up there on the balcony and reach out as far as I could and put a nail in the wall and hang that painting at the spot where the nail was. And then on the other side, I did the exact same thing. And it's kind of a miracle. The one looks a little crooked, but all I have to do is go give it a little push with a ruler up there and straighten it up. And I should have done that before, but I just 
notice it now. But I hung those on high. So we have our whole family room. And I think we just got high in the family room. So yesterday, next week, though, we are going down. And we're going down to Cuyahoga Falls, Ohio, to the Cuyahoga Falls Art Center to see, to see the show Detailed. And Detailed is a two-artist show with Mark Giangaspero, who you saw some of his work last week in my living room, and with um, Beth Lindenberger, who is a ceramicist. Um, and I cannot wait to see that show, and I'm gonna do something that's a little cold turkey, because the first time I see the show is gonna be an hour before we present the show. So we'll see how that works out. Hopefully I will be able to say something intelligent about it. And I know that's going to be an awesome show, so at least it will be an awesome show to look at. Um, so join me next week, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, February 11th, 6 p.m. Thursday. Same bad time, same bad channel. Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs>